it's another video. Let's go. Okay, guys, welcome back. You know the routine. We're going to talk about a crazy, interesting case while I do my makeup. And sip my tea okay so this case mm, I'm trying to think I don't know if you would have heard of it or not I know I heard about it and when I heard about it I was just like Ooh. so yeah I'm gonna tell you guys all about it honey because this one is pretty good okay okay so this video will not be ASMR and you know I know I started my channel doing ASMR and so I know a lot of the people that follow me for that are like, okay, you, you kind of turning, you getting real Hollywood on us because you're not giving us the ASMR videos like you used to. But, um, so what I'm going to start doing is I'm going to have some, and I may actually review the same case where one video may be a regular video and one video may be an ASMR if anyone is interested. So, um, yeah, I just felt the need to say that. Let's go. Okay, guys, so this is the case of Celeste Johnson, okay? Now, in this video, you guys know I love making up little appropriate nicknames for these people. And in this video, her name will be Celeste the hot mess. Speaking of hot mess, I gotta figure out what I'm doing with these eyes, y'all. I have no idea how I'm gonna do my makeup. That's crazy. I usually have an idea before I start the video. Okay, I'm rambling. Let's go. So anyway, so her name is Celeste Johnson and Celeste was um, adopted at a very young age, but she says that in her adopted home, there was like all types of abuse going on like maybe dad towards the mom or something even though she kind of blamed like both parents however it is interesting to say that I know that I've seen recent pictures where the adopted mom uh, Nancy has actually been to the prison to see her and she also um, spearheads this website like um basically saying how innocent Celeste is and it's just a miscarriage of justice and blah 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 so I don't know how true the allegations of abuse are it almost feels like Celeste is just trying to go ahead and make an excuse or a reason why you know she did what she did even though she doesn't admit to it at all it's just almost like she likes to play the victim a lot you know what I mean so when Celeste was 17 she got pregnant and she married a guy named Craig Bratcher. Now, when she was pregnant, she actually had twins, twin girls. However, um, Celeste lost custody of them once they divorced and the dad initially raised the twins. So she got married again, that didn't work out. Then she got married again, that didn't work out. Celeste was so busy. So then she decided like, oh, okay, I kind of need to get, you know, my life together. So she got a job at a country club because, you know, what better way to meet rich men than at the country club, you know what I mean? So she was a waitress there and that is actually where she met her victim, I mean husband, Stephen Beard. Now at this time Celeste was 32 and Stephen was 70. Now Stephen's wife had died a few years earlier um, from cancer. She actually had it and then she beat it and then she got it again and it just really like wiped her out. You know what I mean? I hate cancer. So anyway, his wife had recently uh, died of cancer and he was 70 and he met young, firm, 32 year old Celeste at the country club. And of course, you know, she put on her best front and smiled and probably tooted that booty up a little bit every time she walked by. Oh, hey, Stephen, nice weather we're having. So anyway, whatever she did, she got Stephen's attention and she got it quick and she got it hard. 
So, um, Stephen invited Celeste, you know, of course she told him her sob story, you know, what was me, blah, 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 blah. So he convinced her to move in with him, which, I mean, let's be honest, I'm sure it did not take much convincing, you know what I mean? So she moves in with Stephen as a, like, a housekeeper. Okay. So, of course, his kids were, like, dead set as against it. Of course, your dad is in his 70s. He moves in this chick, like, more than half his age in. And you can already tell once you meet her, she's a little, like, mm. I'd be like, Dad, what is wrong with you? But he promised to help her uh, get her kids back. So they go to court, they fight, they get her twins, Jennifer and Christina, back. Now, the girls were not that happy because they always said that they had a somewhat troubled relationship with their mom. So even though they were twin girls, they were, you know, totally okay living with their dad. But um, Celeste prevailed in court and she brought the girls home to their new like million dollar home in Stephen's house, right? So um, they still kind of proclaimed, oh, she's the housekeeper, whatever. And then one of his daughters caught them at a hotel during Super Bowl weekend. So basically the cat was out the bag at that point. She was not the live-in housekeeper, honey. She was the live-in wife. So let's talk about Steven. So you should have already gathered because of the fact that I said he um, was at the country club, you know what I mean? Whole to tool. So anyway, he was actually a millionaire. I'm sorry. He was actually a multi-millionaire. He was a little bit more than a multi-millionaire, honey. Stephen was worth more than $10 million. What happened was he owned a television station in Austin and then once he sold it, cha-ching, Stephen got that money. So of course Stephen's kids were not having it. He had a daughter, two sons, none of them approved of this, but the dad was really happy. He had not been happy in a while. He actually told one of his friends like, look, I'm not the type of guy that should be single. I need someone at home. I need someone to take care of. I need someone to take care of me. So I'm sure with Celeste moving in and you know, her twin girls, he's back in daddy mode. Cause his kids were like 40 at this time, 50. Um, I think two of his kids were actually older than his wife. Yeah, okay. But anyway, so it gave him something to do, so they were happy about that. Okay, guys, so they decide to get married, and of course, it did not take long for red flags to start appearing. So the first thing is, Stephen's banker at his bank actually called him one day. Now, I suppose Stephen had a, like, couple of safety deposit boxes. Well, honey, Miss Celeste, had moseyed her way to the bank and started taking Stephen's dead wife's jewelry out. She was taking it. She wasn't telling him. She was just taking it. And no one knows if she was like trying to wear it. It didn't really specify. Was she trying to sell it? It doesn't matter. It's just freaking weird. So at that point, Stephen quickly filed for divorce. He was like, Oh, hell no, you're not about to be stealing from me. I'm taking care of you. I'm taking care of your kids. This is not about to happen. However, he was really sad about having to file for divorce. And you know when somebody is sad about something, it's like you can like, if you're that type of person, you can manipulate them. You know what I mean? Of course, Celeste did what she did. So the divorce was called off. They were able to reconcile. Everything was good. So for a while, everything was going good. Celeste had actually convinced Stephen to adopt her two twin daughters because, you know, she was like, hey, if you love me, like you say you do, you would not make it to where if something happens to you, like we're all left out in the cold and, you know, you say you love them, but you're leaving them out of your will. Celeste was good. So Stephen um, legally adopted the girls, which means when he died, they would get basically one fifth of everything because remember he had three kids and then these were two twins. Yeah, 
3 plus 2, 5, you get it. So around that same time, Celeste's spending habits begin to get freaking crazy. I mean, he would give her like a $56,000 a month budget and she would blow through it. So at one point, you know, he was like, okay, look, I'm going to give you 500000 You know, this should last you a while, blah, blah, blah. Um, in six months, Celeste was broke again. Like this chick had absolutely no money management. She didn't know how to manage money, you know, which is pretty common when you don't come from money, I think. But either way, Celeste was broke. Her spending was getting out of control and Steven was getting really tired of it. So at one point he was like, okay, you know what? You're spending way too much money. This, this is a wrap, like this is just crazy. So it, would, it was at that point when she had a nervous breakdown. She became suicidal. Yeah, not suicidal, suicidal, like, cause she was just crazy. So anyway, she checks herself into this mental health facility in Austin. Now at this Austin treatment facility is where things, this is where like everything kicked off, you know what I mean? So she met a patient there, a woman by the name of Tracy Tarleton. Now Tracy um, is a lesbian and the nature of their friendship is not really, you know, a lot of people were confused by it because of course Celeste was straight, she was married, blah, blah, blah. However, people have noted that she was like extremely manipulative and did not think that she was above flirting with someone even if she had no interest in them to get something that she wanted, you know what I mean? So a lot of the other patients there reported that Celeste was basically really flirtatious with Tracy. Everyone assumed that they were in a relationship, like she would sit on her lap, they were playing in each other's hair. I mean, it was a hot girl summer at the psych ward. So everyone just assumed that they were lovers and you know, hey, it's no, not a thing, you know what I mean? So once they were released, Tracy started kind of coming by the house. She became like a family friend. They would have Christmas parties she would come to. They would have like get together, stuff like that. She would come because she was Celeste's friend. Um, even Celeste's twins knew her. You know, I don't know if she was Aunt Tracy. I don't know who she was to them, but she was not a stranger to the family. So let's fast forward to the crime. So on October 2nd, 1999, um, Stephen called 911 at 3 a.m. for help. Okay guys, so he called 911 because like I said at 3 a.m. somebody had come in, basically like broken into the house and shot him in the stomach. Now the interesting thing is nothing really seemed to be missing from the house, you know, I mean, it didn't really seem like a break-in. Now, Celeste did not hear or know anything because um, she was supposedly sleeping in a different area of the house. So once the police get there, you know, of course, IMSA alerts the police and all of that stuff. And once the police get there, they found it a little strange because Celeste is quoted as saying like, oh, this is just great. We were supposed to go to Europe tomorrow. And the police sergeant that had been talking to her found it really odd that as a woman whose husband had just been shot, you know, and it still could be pretty fatal that she would have made a statement like that. You know, she wasn't, didn't seem to be super concerned about him. She was just kind of upset over the fact that they wouldn't be able to go to Europe. So with all of this going on, you know, especially with his age and all that, people just kind of knew that Stephen was going to succumb to his injuries, but surprisingly enough, he did not. You guys, he lived. That's crazy. So like I said, this took place in October. 
Okay, so Stephen did have like massive injuries. Of course, if someone is shot in the stomach with like a shotgun, that's massive. So he was in need of a lot of care and he actually stayed in the hospital for months. I'm going back in with my BH Cosmetics Studio Pro Palette for anyone interested. So yeah, he was in the hospital for months and months. So here is the interesting thing. Um, a couple of days after the shooting at the home, Celeste's daughter, Jennifer, had told police basically about Tracy and their friendship because she was a little suspicious of her mom as well. You guys, what kind of mom do you have to be to where your kids are like, mm, we don't trust this heifer, could have been her. Y'all, if my mama was there and had killed somebody, I don't care if she was standing over the body with a gun. I'd be like, mm -mm, she ain't do it. You know what I mean? Because that's your mom. So that is just like super crazy to me. So anyway, the police found some spent shell casings at the crime scene. Which is like, you know, once you shoot the gun, the thing that falls out, like the, the casing of the bullet. So they trace that back to a shotgun that Tracy had. This was just all bad. It's like when criminals do dumb things, you know what I mean? This could be on an episode of Dumb Criminals. So anyway, they found the shotgun. And what's funny is the shotgun actually had her name engraved on it. There's no way to say that it wasn't yours. So they started questioning her and they charged her with assault. Because remember at this time, Stephen was still alive. So Stephen was doing what? fine and he was actually making a recovery. But on January 22nd, he died suddenly from a blood clot. Now the blood clot stemmed from the injury that he received um, from the shotgun wound. So they essentially this case became a homicide against Tracy. Now, when he died, you know, Celeste was so upset. So she was telling her friends like, yeah, I'm gonna have to check myself back into the clinic because I'm just suicidal. She's so upset that Stephen isn't here. What turns out, instead of going to the, the mental health facility, she actually went to Mardi Gras in New Orleans because nothing gets you over your husband's death like a hurricane. Or maybe she just needed some beads. I don't know. Maybe that helped her get over it. She flashed her little ta-ta. She got some beads. And the world seemed a happier place. Now, another crazy thing is once her husband died, once he died, she married a carpenter within five months. Five months. So either you met someone super quickly, fell in love, and decided that you wanted to get married again, or, 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 you had this person to the side the whole time, or at least during some portion of your marriage, you know what I mean? And then people started speculating like, well, if she did have this person to the side, could this had contributed to her wanting to get rid of her husband's death? Hmm, what do you think? So at this point, you know, her daughters are like, okay, something is totally wrong. What do I want to do to my makeup? So yeah, so at this point, her daughters are like, okay, something is weird here. This don't seem right. Like, you know, you're already married five months after our stepdad died. And what's interesting is her daughters were closer to him than to her. That's just so odd, you know what I mean? But. Yeah, crazy. Now, you know, Tracy is still, um, Tracy is still fighting her assault charge from, you know, where she shot uh, Stephen. Now, the crazy thing is she's looking at the newspaper one day and what does she see in the newspaper? Well, I'm about to tell you. Tracy sees a marriage announcement for Celeste and the guy that she married, um, the guy that she had, you know, just married. Yeah, he's a carpenter named Cole Johnson. So she sees a marriage announcement and she's like, wait a minute, wait a minute, hold up. 
No, this heifer didn't. Let, let me call the cops and give them the real story. So, honey, let me tell you what Tracy did. Tracy called them people. <laughs> them people in them black and white cars, them policemen. And Tracy said, listen, I've been taking the blame for this. It's time I give you the real story. And baby, baby, when I tell you that Tracy started talking, Tracy started talking. You will not believe what she said. So in exchange for a sentence of 20 years, Tracy decided to turn state or flip on Celeste. So basically she said, Celeste um, would always accuse Stephen of like emotionally and mentally abusing her, like making her feel less than a person. He was super abusive, like that's why she was always wanting to kill herself. That's why, you know, she was always this, that's why that. I mean, she was really good at making excuses, right? So she told Tracy, you know, the only thing stopping us from being together is him. And if he were like only out of the picture, we can be together and we can be out with it and we can be in love and you know, we would have all this money. Basically life would be perfect. Tracy said that um, Celeste was super flirtatious with her the first time that she ever met her at the mental institution, right? At the mental facility. And she said they had a sexual relationship. Remember Celeste just said that they were friends but they had a sexual relationship. And she said, basically, she was led to believe that they were a couple, a real true to life couple. Now, during the trial, um, because of these accusations, Johnson was Celeste, Celeste the hot mess, was arrested on March 28, 2002. So at her trial, the prosecutors were saying, look, you only wanted Steven because of his money. So I'm about to run down these figures for you guys. Hold on, I have to look at it because I don't have it memorized, but watch this. So according to Steven's accountant, according to his accountant, Celeste spent $321,000 in October and November. That's $321,000 thousand dollars that is like triple or or i don't know what that's triple times two what most people make in a year she's spending in two months what the hell are you buying celeste apparently she really liked jewels of course she did she tried to steal steven's wife so of course she liked jewelry she also had a thing for fur coats. She really liked fur coats and she liked luxury cars. Celeste is like the example of a person that never had anything. And then you get some money, you get them coins, get that change, and you don't know how to act. Okay, so Celeste, the hot mess, spent 321,000 in October and November she spent 249,000 by December and another 100,000 um between December and March. I guess she had a bad week or a bad month that time. Maybe Celeste was on the budget during that time frame, I don't know. Maybe Christmas hit hard. So, prosecutor said that Celeste was just with Beard for his money that she never loved him. She wasn't attracted to him because of his age and his weight. Cause Stephen was a really big guy. He was a really big guy. And they said there was no way that she was attracted to him. And that basically Celeste was just a little user. Now, then her daughters also testified, you know, and of course they're her daughters. So people were like, oh, what are they gonna say? Well, girl, they got on the stand and told people that they had heard their mom making threats against Steven, like their testimony pretty much put the nail in the coffin for her because, you know, people are like, well, if her own daughters will get up there and say that, like, she's not to be believed. Your own daughters are not riding with you. Now, another interesting thing is one of Celeste's friends 
claimed that Celeste hired her a month after all of this went down to kill Tracy so she could cover up everything. I think she was going to make it seem like, oh, Tracy killed Steven and then she killed herself because, you know, she was so like overcome with grief or something. Of course, it did not happen, but that was another super bad red flag for Celeste. And then it didn't get any better because when she was in jail, when one of her daughters came to visit her, she was telling them about trying to find someone to kill Tracy to get, you know, everything back under control. Of course, the conversation was recorded and her daughter snitched her out. As usual, Celeste was just a hot mess. Now, her attorney said that, oh, Tracy did this all on her own because she was just obsessed with Celeste, right? They painted her as this like unstable, mental illness having lesbian that's just out there you know wrecking homes and just super crazy and they said that during um i guess tracy had got a dui and celeste bailed her out of jail and they said you know tracy was kind of hanging around with celeste then and stephen made celeste oh i'm sorry tracy stopped contacting them because you know, he felt like she was obsessed with Celeste. Now this is just the prosecutors, which means it came from Celeste. So you can take all that with a grain of salt. I don't really believe it honestly, but you know, you do you. Now Celeste's attorney also said that her daughters were lying because if Celeste were to be, you know, acquitted or found innocent, they would get less money. So he was basically saying that her daughters wanted her to be found guilty because they would get a bigger share of the inheritance. That is cold. So in the end, it took, I need a mirror. I need a mirror to see, thank you. So in the end, it took the jurors three days to find Celeste guilty. And you know, Tracy had the mandatory 20 year sentence, but it took jurors three days to find Celeste guilty and in her state, when you're found guilty, you receive a mandatory life sentence because she was found guilty of capital murder. Mm. And it was so interesting because she got a lesser sentence than the person that actually committed the crime. But um, the prosecutors were saying the crime would have never happened. Tracy would have never killed Stephen just because she wanted to kill him. She killed him in protection of Celeste after being manipulated and led on by Celeste. So they considered her the true mastermind of the whole, you know, situation. So Celeste will be eligible for parole in April of 2042. She still has some time to go. So as of 2019, Celeste still proclaims her innocence. She swears she's innocent and Tracy just did this because she was obsessed with her. Now, in exchange of testifying, Tracy received a 10-year reduced sentence, and she is actually already out. She got out in August of 2011, and she moved to San Antonio. Okay, you guys, so of course Celeste is still in prison. And it's pretty interesting, you know, she's been assisting her mom with um, helping out. I told you her mom is really active, like on the, on the website about all the reasons, you know, Celeste is innocent and how and why she could not have done it. Well, she also has some free time, I suppose a lot of free time in prison. And so she and four other inmates decided to write a book. Now, the name of the book is From the Big House to Your House. It's a cookbook that lists the recipes that can be made in prison using only items that you get from your prison commissary. Okay, so if any of you all are interested in that book, I think I am going to um, go ahead and link it in the description box because 
you guys may have people at your house and you may want to um, cook like you are in prison one day and you may want to see all of the pasta dishes that you can make with your ramen that you buy. I, I don't know. Do they even have ramen in prison? I feel like if you have ramen, you would have to have a microwave. I don't know. So anyway, Celeste is also working on an additional book entitled um, Celeste, the Celeste Beard Johnson story. Really sounds like a Lifetime movie, doesn't it? Oh, dude, that should be a Lifetime movie. Oh my gosh. I would watch it. I bet it'd be crazy. I would definitely watch it. Okay, you guys, so I just put on a lipstick that I am not all the way for sure that I like. However, that is the end of my video. Now, so I'm curious to hear from you guys. One, do you all think Celeste should have gotten more time than Tracy? Remember, Tracy is the person that actually pulled the trigger. However, they said that the trigger would have never been pulled had Celeste not set everything in motion. So that's my first question to you. Do you feel like Celeste should have gotten more time than Tracy? My next question to you, do you feel like they should have gotten murder charges if he, you know, the crime happened in October, but he didn't actually die until January, even though they're saying he died due to circumstances of being shot. It's interesting though, I looked on her website and they have like a lot of his medical records, I guess that they've gotten and posted online on Celeste um, Beard Johnson's website. And um, they're saying that the reason he died had nothing to do with the gunshot. I don't know, it's really interesting, but that's my next question to you guys. Should they have gotten a murder charge if he died not the night that he got shot, but like three months later? What do you guys think? I think it's really interesting. I wanna hear your comments before I post mine. I'm going to go find a lipstick that I like a little bit better because I don't know about this one. And I will see you guys in the next video. If you have not done so already, don't forget to hit that like button and also smash that subscribe button. I'll see you guys in the next video. Oh, one more thing. If you have um, a good juicy case you'd like me to talk about, I don't know all the cases, I need your help. Definitely drop it in the comment section. I'll see you guys later. All right then, bye y'all.